Hello world, this is Invisible Doogie, and let's see how fast I can teach you Project Spark. So let's start with the four tiles we have on our left-hand side. We got a biome brush, we got a paint brush, we have a sculpt brush, and then we have a prop brush. So let's start with the biome brush. And by the way, I am using a controller right now, but I'm actually working on my PC, so I have the benefit of having both controls and uh, keyboard and mouse. Uh, I'm not going to be going through controls, but please, if you don't know the controls of Project Spark, go through the, t the uh, tutorial. It is not intuitive for a controller. Uh, you're going to have to relearn a lot of different things. So the biome brush. This is basically the paintbrush, but on top of that, it adds stuff while I'm painting. So it adds props. Uh, important thing, though, is let's open up our little prop counter. So we have a prop limit. Uh, we also have a terrain limit and even a music and connect limit. Once we hit those, we can't add anything else. So when you're using the biome brush, it is a uh, quick and easy way to drop in uh, a full forest, but it's gonna, it's gonna run out your prop count or your object count uh, a lot faster than not using it. So uh, use it wisely when you're using the biome brush. Then we have the paintbrush, which is basically the biome brush sans biomes, and it just does the painting. Um, we also got a full list of uh, different painting tiles. Uh, a lot of these are from content or DLC packs that you can purchase with in-game currency or real money. Uh, I have all of them. Um, but some of them, for instance, use woodland grass and woodland coast ones. Those are all free. Uh, and so let's hit woodland coast. And... We have selected Woodland Coast. And so now, not only am I painting Woodland Coast, but you'll notice the stuff I painted before is now Woodland Coast. And that's because uh, whatever you select here at the bottom, if you change that tile, anything that has been painted in that tile before in that world will be changed to whatever the new thing is. Um, then we have all of the, diff the different sculpting tools. Uh, so we got Expand and Erode, Add Subtract, Smooth and Roughen, Plateau Tunnel, Cubify, Decubify. So Expand and Erode basically slowly expands your land and slowly gets rid of it. Well, not as slowly. Uh, pretty fast actually gets rid of it. Um, then we have Add and Subtract, which uh, literally exactly adds your world and uh, exactly subtracts it. Uh, let's actually do that. And so it just gives you a quick, easy way to add a bunch of uh, new terrain. Then we have the Smooth Tool and the Roughen Tool. So the Smooth Tool, um, actually just to help uh, show this a bit better, Let's just add some terrain right here, just like that. So then we got the smooth tool, um, which it smoothens all the different edges of anything you're working with, every single edge of it. Um, so very useful if you have something kind of rough and you want to make like a ramp or something like that. Uh, then we have the roughen tool, which as you would expect, does the exact opposite. It makes actually some really cool looking terrain. Like I could picture this thing in a spaceship minefield or uh, asteroid field, you know, a bunch of, put this in space, make a derelict space station and all that types of stuff. Um, so very cool. And then you can use the, um, you can use the smooth tool to smooth it back out again. Um, then we have the plateau tool and the tunnel tool. And the plateau tool, what that does is that looks for, whatever it's on, it looks for the highest terrain uh, that your uh, selector is touching. And then, based on that, it makes a flat plateau. So this is how you can quickly make um, a flat surface. Um, and then, as you would expect, you got the cool tunnel tool as well, and that allows you to make a tunnel through uh, terrain. So now we have a nice looking tunnel right there. Then we have Decubify and Cubify. So this is what I like to call Minecraft and un-Minecraft items. Uh, so let's cubify this and look at this. Suddenly we are playing a game of Minecraft. Super cool, um, especially if you got some cool looking terrain. And um, you know, it allows your world to really feel like Minecraft, feel a bit different. Um, then we have the uh, decubify for if you're like, well, Minecraft was fun, but I don't want to make Minecraft anymore. Then don't worry, you can just um, erase all that with decubify. And by the way, you can also erase stuff with an undo tool. Uh, you got this full undo tool at the very bottom, right down here, uh, this, this orange little thing here. And we can uh, basically go back a bunch of different, um, uh, a bunch of different times and undo, undo a lot of the stuff we've done. All right, so now we've got the prop tools. This is how you can add all the props in the world. So these trees that we added with the biome brush, those are props. Uh, your character is also a prop. 
Let's open up the prop gallery and we have a lot of different props to choose between. So again, I have all DLC packs. So uh, for instance, the Arct these Arctic Ferns are part of one of the packs. Uh, this stuff is mostly all free, um, but you have hundreds of different things to choose between. Uh, you find something you like, click it, and then you can choose where it goes in the world. And bam, we got a bunch of different freight fish. So you got objects, you also have characters. Uh, so these are any different animals, different people, uh, and fish and birds. Um, so we can put down a snow fox. Then we have the champions. Um, these are champions you, you can level in Project Spark. Uh, that uh, Their levels carry over from one of your games to the next. Then we got um, effects where you can make uh, fireballs, explosions, waterfalls, things like that. You got a sound, a sound gallery where you can um, add a sound directly into the world, uh, but you probably actually want to add it through code. Um, then we got assemblies, where you basically put a different bunch of different props together and you make an assembly out of them. So for instance, we got Castle Rampart. And look at that. One prop is now a castle. Um, so how did you make it? How did we make this castle? So we got this multi-edit tool, and this allows you to select a bunch of different objects together, select them uh, manually, or we have this uh, little selection sphere that selects anything that the sphere is, uh, envelops. Uh, and then what you can do is you can glue those objects together. Uh, what did I do? I guess I did not hit the right button. Uh, so we can glue these together. And just like that, I now have these two are glued, but we can unglue them as well, just like that. And then what you can do is, let's select these guys again. You can also save them as an assembly. And this is where it adds it to your assembly area in your prop gallery. So this is how you can uh, create an assembly, put it in one of your other worlds, uh, and even go into someone's world from the UGC, uh, save one of their really cool props, and then bring it into your own world as well. Um, the power tool, I have never even used this, so I'm not going to show you how to use it because I've never used it myself. Um, for the last tool, let me quickly uh, let me quickly get a crayfish right next to my character here. So we have the attach tool. And what that does is it attaches one object to another object. And so for instance, let's attach this crayfish to my character. And just like that, now you'll notice that th as my character moves, this crayfish is kind of moving. That's because, uh, for all intent and purposes, this crayfish is now part of this guy's body. Um, so this is how you can add a bunch of different props onto a character, make them custom. Uh, speaking of the character, what kind of options do you have? Well, everything has a brain. Um, I'm not going to actually go through the brain because look up the user Mescad, M-E-S-C-A-D, on YouTube. He has literally, I think by this point, over 150 videos uh, of how to do anything within code in Project Spark. Uh, but all you need to know is there's a win side and a do side and a bunch of different tiles that tell you what to do. So when A is pressed, you jump. When X is pressed, you attack. And th this is all the stuff you can set to basically give your game life. But within here, you got this cool brain gallery. And with this brain gallery, you can uh, select a bunch of different preset brains or brains you save yourself and bring them into the character. So just like that, I now have a first-person shooter. Uh, I can also save my brain into that brain gallery uh, so I can use it in another world. Uh, then you got a bunch of different options which are kind of self-explanatory, renaming your brain, copying pages, pasting pages. And yeah, you have multiple pages in, uh, in a character, but uh, that is for a, another tutorial. Um, so then you have a bunch of different options on your character. You got brain editor. We were just in that uh, properties where you can change the appearance of something uh, on a character. You don't change how they look or how their clothes look here, but with things like uh, like rocks or like this crayfish, I can change its color right within here in appearance. Then you can set like its uh, acceleration, its speeds for doing different things within movement. Combat is how you can set how much damage your guy does, um, how much health they have. Uh, if they're invincible and vulnerable, if they have hit reactions. Uh, sound, this is how you can choose basically uh, how quiet someone is uh, and how, how far away um, you can be to still hear something. So this guy has a max fade distance 35. That means if as long as something is, is within 35 meters of this guy, they can still hear him. You got physics. Uh, so any character type, anyone who needs to move around the world, jump around, things like that, needs to have character physics. You have tumbling physics, where if like if you picture a rock being tumbled off the ledge, you know, kicking a rock off the ledge, and seeing it actually fall down and be affected by gravity, you need to ha have it have tumbling physics. Then we have fixed physics, which is basically it's whatever has fixed physics, it's stuck in the world. No matter what you do to it, it just sticks there. It stays. 
Um, you, then you can make something collidable or not collidable. So if it's not collidable, you can pass through it. This is actually very important for um, your attachments. You want all of your attachments on any character to be have collidable to off because there's some weird physics that can sometimes happen if your collidable isn't off for attachments where uh, your character might go flying away because of some weird uh, physics that I think Team Dakota and Project Spark is still working on. Uh, then you can uh, change your character into a template. So just like that, this guy is now a template. He won't be in the world when I go into test mode, um, but I can bring him into other characters and, and like create him, things like that. Uh, and now he's no longer a template, so now he'll be in the world. Um, you can also change the power of your character, and also you can choose if your character's brain runs or doesn't run, or whatever object you're, you're playing with. So within Character Studio, you have the option of, uh, this is where you get to your connect recording that you can do for your character, your custom recording there. Uh, you can set how your character looks here. Uh, you can set what their clothing is, and this is also where you can uh, choose your clothing color. And then you can also uh, add attachments here as well. So let's add an acorn to his head, and um, if I had a bit of extra time, uh, let's just make it a tiny bit bigger. And you know, if I had a big event, bit of extra time, I could, uh, you know, make like a custom character. Like now I have a cool acorn head character. Um, so this is where you can add attachments to really any part of them. Um, swap mesh and replace, basically you just open up a prop gallery and it changes the character to whatever you, you uh, click on. But don't do replace. Uh, that has glitches sometimes where it cr will crash your world. Then you can also clone a character. Uh, and then this is where you can, uh, you know, make a bunch of different copies of them. Um, so, now that we're all done, we can just jump into, well, actually, we got world settings. Um, this is where you can, uh, world settings is where you can change wh what kind of, uh, what kind of time of day it is, um, what the sun looks like, your background music, your, uh, ambient track that's playing, like, you know, wind or birds chirping, things like that, uh, your water, and, uh, a few different, like, uh, world settings. And you can jump into test mode whenever you want, and, uh... It ain't pretty, but it's uh, all I do in uh, however many minutes. And so that is, um, that's Project Spark in a nutshell. Uh, so for all of you who suck around with me, um, just know that this is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there are a lot of tutorial videos out there, um, especially on projectspark.com and also project-spark.org, which I'm a member of. So for all of you who are jumping into Project Spark, there's a huge community out there, a lot of other people who know a lot about code because code is kind of hard to get your, uh, your head wrapped around on. So I would uh, suggest that you go to the community and ask us lots of questions because uh, you might have lots of questions when you're building stuff in your game uh, about how to do certain things. But hopefully this gave you the, uh, the basis that you need to uh, at least start creating. Um, if you like this, please tell me, let me know, and also let me know if you have other t the uh, tutorial requests that you want for Project Spark. I'm going to be around Project Spark for a long, long time, so uh, yeah, drop me a line, and thanks for watching.